All right, folks, so let's get to what all of you have been asking for, the Apple Watch Ultra versus the Garmin Epix and Phoenix 7. So the new Apple Watch Ultra essentially doubled the battery life of other Apple Watches. It also comes with a new suit of armor on the outside for increased durability, and it also comes with a new action button for better usability, basically all things that make it a more capable outdoor-focused sports watch. But are those things enough to make it compete with some of the likes of the most popular sports watches on the market today? Well, that's what we're going to find out in today's video, where we're going to go over 10 key differences between the Apple Watch Ultra and the Garmin Epix and Phoenix 7. The Garmin Epix and the Phoenix 7, they're nearly identical in terms of features, so lots of stuff I'm talking about in today's video are going to be interchangeable between these two. The main difference though is that the Phoenix 7 uses a transflective display technology which is extremely readable in direct sunlight but isn't quite as vibrant and isn't quite as pretty inside. The Garmin Epix on the other hand it uses an AMOLED display technology which is super vibrant but it takes a lot more battery life. And for the sake of this video just because the Garmin Epix uses a similar display technology to the Ultra I'll be mainly talking about the Epix. So before we can even talk about features we need to talk about what kind of smartphone that you have. So with the Apple Watch Ultra you have to use an iPhone with it. There's really no getting around that. With the Garmin Epix and the Phoenix 7, you can use it with either an Android phone or an iPhone. And with the Ultra, of course, you get all that amazing smartwatch integration with the iPhone, like robust notifications where you can reply in all sorts of ways, including emojis and voice dictation, mirroring a lot of apps that you have on your phone, Apple Maps integration for directions. It's just a great seamless experience with your iPhone. And with the Epix and Phoenix 7, you can receive notifications whether you're on an iPhone or an Android phone, but you can only reply to messages with predefined responses if you're on an Android phone. And then moving on to the hardware, there's really only one version of the Ultra that runs 799 where it comes with a 49 millimeter titanium case with a sapphire lens and the only options you have are the bands. And one more thing with the Ultra is that it only comes in GPS plus cellular version. So you'll have the option of being able to stay connected without having your phone nearby. But just note that for that connectivity, you will have to have an additional add-on plan to your existing cell phone plan. But don't worry, even though it does have the cellular hardware on board, you don't have to sign up for a plan. And then for the Garmin Epix, it comes in three different versions. There's a stainless steel version with a Gorilla Glass lens that runs $899, and then there's a sapphire version with titanium hardware that comes at $999. And the Epix comes in just one size at 47 millimeters. So if we're just comparing the hardware in terms of the titanium and the sapphire lens, the Ultra actually comes out to be a little bit cheaper, but there's definitely a lot more things to consider. And then continuing on with the hardware, the Ultra comes with the new action button, which extends the functionality quite a bit versus other Apple Watches, where in addition to the digital crown and the side button, as well as the touchscreen, the action button can be set to perform customizable actions like starting a workout, starting a stopwatch, dropping a waypoint, as well as enabling the flashlight along with some other things. And then in addition, you can use that action button in conjunction with the side button or digital crown to pause and resume a workout in progress, which is super handy in addition to being able to press the digital crown of the side button together to pause. And then with the Ultra, they've also increased the size of the digital crown from other Apple Watches, adding a pretty aggressive texture to it, so it's easy to use it with gloves. And they protect that digital crown and side button with a little button guard to prevent accidental presses. And with the Garmin Epix and Phoenix 7, you have a five button configuration along with a touchscreen. And the touchscreen is something new to Garmin's high end range of watches, but it gives you an additional way of interacting with the device. And it's super handy to use with maps where you can pan and zoom. And then with the Ultra, you can also pan around the maps with a touchscreen along with a digital crown for zooming in and out. The beauty of the Epix or the Phoenix 7 though is that you actually don't have to use the touchscreen at all if you don't want to. Like let's say if your hands are sweaty or if you have gloves on. You can do everything that you can do with the touchscreen with physical buttons. So like with the maps, you can still pan and browse the map using buttons if you'd like. It's just that the touchscreen adds an additional way of interacting with the device whenever you prefer. And with the Apple Watch Ultra, you actually have to use the touchscreen to perform certain functions. Like you can't really interact with the apps without the touchscreen and you can't even end and save a workout without using the touchscreen. And for some of the more unique hardware features, the Apple Watch Ultra also comes with a siren. And this siren is super, super loud. And the siren, honestly, is a pretty unique feature in the sports watch world. The Garmin Epix, it doesn't come with a siren, but if we switch over to the Garmin Phoenix 7X for a second, it actually has a dedicated LED flashlight. And I use that flashlight constantly. The Apple Watch Ultra, it does have a flashlight feature, but that's just turning the display completely white. It's not a dedicated light like on the Phoenix 7X. Oh, and really quick, if you're finding the information in this video to be useful, do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button. It's a small little thing that you can do that'll help this video and the channel quite a bit, and I appreciate it. And then for battery life, the Apple Watch Ultra essentially doubles the battery life claim of other Apple Watches with up to 36 hours. And that's just with the stock settings with the always on display being enabled and even including a one hour workout during that time period. The great thing is about Apple's battery life claims is that they always seem to be very conservative. So I'm easily getting 40 hours and sometimes almost up to two days out of the Ultra under normal use. And then with the Epix, if we mirror a lot of the same settings that come out of the box with the Apple Watch Ultra, like turning on the always on display, turning on SpO2 measurements at night, it's in the realm of like three to four days. And that does include recording some outdoor workouts. 
And then for battery life for recording outdoor activities, the Epix can get up to 15 hours in its strongest satellite system mode with the always on display being enabled. The Ultra on the other hand, their claim is 12 hours, but again, that claim seems to be pretty conservative where I'm getting more like 15 hours. The Apple Watch Ultra also comes with a new low power mode where it disables the always on display, it doesn't take background heart rate measurements, it also disables the SpO2 sensor, and it limits connectivity with your phone. And with this mode, you can get up to two to three days out of it. And what's nice about the low power mode on the Ultra is that even though it doesn't take background heart rate measurements throughout the day, it actually still will record full GPS and heart rate data during workouts. And with the Epix, it has a lot of power management tools that you can use to adjust the settings to get just the right battery life that you want. But I wanna talk about just disabling the always on display the Epic. So if we just turn off the always on display and nothing else, you can get over 10 days out of it. And that is including recording outdoor activities. And it will be also taking heart rate measurements 24 hours a day. So when we talk about the full blown battery life of the Ultra and the Epix, when they have the always on display on, as well as all the sensors, it's actually not all that different. But when we just disable the always on display in the Epix, that's a pretty massive difference between the low power mode on the Ultra, which also disables some sensors. And then just to mention it, the Phoenix 7, which uses a completely different type of display technology to extend battery life, you can get anywhere from like 11 to 28 days out of it, depending on which size that you choose. But again, it's kind of a different beast because of that different display. And I guess while we're on the subject of displays, the Ultra comes with a display that's twice as bright as other Apple Watches, and it's super easy to read in direct sunlight, but the same can be said for the Epix. However, I do find the Ultra to be a bit brighter. And then for sport profiles, both of these come with a ton of sport profiles right out of the box. There's seriously tons to choose from, including multi-sport profiles. However, the sport profiles in the Epix and Phoenix 7 can provide a lot more in-context information based on a particular profile. So for instance, the skiing profile in the Ultra's native workout app just records time, distance, and heart rate. The skiing profile in the Epix can automatically track the number of runs that you take during the day and breaks out all this information after the fact, so there's just a lot more data to scour over. And then in addition, the Epix also has full topo and landscape maps built right into the device that you can access completely offline without coverage. And then the Epix also does have full routing and navigation capabilities without having to download anything additional. Apple's native workout app has received some new improvements this year, like new workout views, which show more specific information that you may need during a workout. It's super nice to see. The Epix and Phoenix also have this, but honestly, this is something that Garmin devices, as well as many other sports-focused watches, have had for years. The Apple Watch Ultra also comes with a new Compass app that also has a backtrack feature, which can be super handy in the outdoors, but this feature isn't currently integrated with Maps, and you have to kind of manually enable it unless you're off the grid. Like, it just doesn't automatically start, let's say, if you start a hiking workout, which would be really nice. With the Epix and the Phoenix 7, when you start any outdoor workout, you have the option to backtrack along the route that you took. And then in addition, the Ultra also has a new precision start feature, which shows this kind of getting ready for the workout type of page, which also has a GPS indicator. And you can use this in conjunction with the action button to start the workout at the exact moment that you want. Again, though, this is something that Garmin and nearly every other sports watch has had for a while, where it's actually kind of a standard thing where when you select a workout, up pops a screen that indicates whether or not you have a GPS signal, and you can just start the workout whenever you want using the start button. Now, although Apple's native workout app doesn't have much of the functionality that you can get out of an Epix or Phoenix 7 right out of the box, there are tons of third-party apps that you can download for the Ultra to extend the functionality. So for stuff like routing and navigation, you can use Work Outdoors where you can download map information to your Apple Watch, but you do need to manually download this information kind of in smaller chunks. With the Epix and the Phoenix, you can download different regions, but we're talking about more like continents and not just like a square mile or two. Oh, and then looping back to skiing really quick, you also can use the Slopes app with an Apple Watch to do similar things like automatically tracking your runs. And while we're talking about third-party apps, let's also talk about external sensors. So with the Apple Watch Ultra's native workout app, you can pair Bluetooth heart rate sensors, but unfortunately not stuff like speed and cadence sensors for cycling, as well as power meters. With the Epix and the Phoenix 7, you can pair a ton of different types of sensors, including heart rate monitors, speed and cadence sensors, power meters for cycling, Vario radar and lights, just a ton of stuff. And the advantage of the Phoenix 7 and the Epix is that you also can pair and plus sensors in addition to Bluetooth sensors. Now you can pair Bluetooth speed and cadence sensors as well as power meters to the Ultra, but you'll need third-party apps to do so like cycle meter as well as cadence, which can do all of that. The Apple Watch Ultra also can collect running power and advanced running dynamics right on the wrist itself without having to have an external accessory. The Epix and Phoenix 7 also can collect these types of metrics, but you'll actually need to have something like a Garmin HRM Pro or HRM Pro Plus chest heart rate strap to do so. And then another thing that the Apple Watch Ultra has is it also has specific dive-related features where it's automatically able to detect the depth that you're at, which is pretty cool. 
Another big difference though is on the sports and fitness performance feedback side of things where the Epix has things like training status, training load, a running race predictor, as well as a new feature called training readiness. And all these features basically give you feedback on past training as well as some guidance on when to train again. With the Ultra, it doesn't really have anything like this built in, but you can download some third-party apps like Athletic, which does quite a bit in this department. But then the Apple Watch Ultra does have an ECG feature, which isn't available on Garmin's. And then for GPS accuracy, the Apple Watch Ultra and the Epic Sapphire both have a dual band satellite system mode where they're able to leverage more than one satellite system at one time. And where this can be advantageous is in challenging environments like around really tall buildings or around really tall rock faces or around really heavy tree cover where satellite signals can kind of get a little bit iffy. And in terms of the actual GPS track accuracy in cities and urban environments, both of these do a very good job. The Ultra may have just a slight edge though here because it seems like Apple is able to do a little bit of magic behind the scenes fusing their map data with the GPS data to get just slightly better accuracy. However, in the mountains and on the trails with heavy tree cover, I have to give it to the Epics, where I just tend to see the Ultra cut corners, especially on tight curves and switchbacks while going at higher speeds. And then when it comes to heart rate accuracy, both of these devices perform really well for me. Like on this run, we see nearly the exact same kind of accuracy out of both of them, but the Ultra did have a little bit of a wobble at the beginning, but no big deal though. But then if we look at this example of an outdoor bike ride, the Epix this time had a few moments where it was a little bit shaky, but still pretty darn good. However, the Ultra had this moment right here where I was stopped where it read a little high. I'd rely on the Epix or the Ultra in terms of hard road accuracy, but if I did have to give one a slight edge, it'd probably go to the Ultra. So the new Apple Watch Ultra certainly brought a lot of new things to the table that makes it very appealing for Apple Watch owners who wanted a more outdoor focused sports watch with longer battery life as well as increased durability. So on a hardware front, they certainly delivered. On the software side of things, it still does take quite a few third-party apps to replicate some of the functionality that you can get out of a Garmin. So it's still kind of a question of whether you want to juggle multiple apps versus having mostly everything built all in one. But it's also hard to deny that the Apple Watch Ultra, well, it's still an Apple Watch at its core, so it still has all those amazing smartwatch capabilities that have made Apple Watches so darn popular. So just adding the new sports and outdoor features has made this a lot more interesting. I think all of these are great watches, but the Ultra definitely is starting to blur the lines a little bit more between Apple and Garmin, but there are still some distinct differences between these watches, which may make you want one over the other. And I hope this video helped you understand some of those differences. So those are just some of the big differences between the Apple Watch Ultra and the Garmin Epix and Phoenix 7. And I know there's a lot of other little small differences between these two so if you have any questions about anything i didn't cover in this video definitely leave those in the comment section down below and on your way down there if you found the information in this video to be useful do me a favor and just quickly hit that like button and also subscribe to the channel for plenty more videos including a lot more comparisons that are coming up soon thanks so much for watching and we will see you in the next video